from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now here's your host, Stu Miniman. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is the Cube's Boston area studio. Our actually brand new studio, and I'm really excited to have. I believe it's a first time guest, uh, long time caller, uh, you know, uh, yeah, long time yep. listener, first time caller, uh, good buddy of mine, Dave Graham, uh, who is the director, is a director of Emerging Technologies Messaging uh, at Dell Technologies. Uh, disclaimer: Dave and I worked together at a company some of you might have heard on the past. It was uh, EMC Corporation, uh, which was a local company. Uh, Dave and I both left. EMC, and Dave went back, uh, you know, after Dell had bought EMC. Uh, so, uh, Dave, uh, thanks so much for joining. It is your first time on the Cube, yes? It is the first time on the Cube. Yeah, uh, Stu, so. So some of the first times that I had actually interacted with uh, with this team here. You know, you and I were, you know, bloggers and doing lots of stuff, uh, you know, b back in the industry. So it's uh, great to be able to talk to you on camera. Yeah, nice to be here. All right. Uh, so, uh, Dave, I mentioned you, you were a, a returning former EMC or now, uh, you know, Dell tech uh, person. Person, uh, and uh, you spent some time at, at Juniper at some startups. Yep. Uh, but g give our audience a little bit about your background, and your passions. Oh, uh, so background-wise, yep. So started my career in technology, if you will, at EMC. Worked uh, started in inside sales of all places, and worked my way into a uh, consulting engineer type position uh, within ECS, which is you know obviously a pretty hardcore product inside of EMC now. Or Dell Technologies now. Uh, left, went to a startup. Sam, you know, everybody's got to do a startup at some point in their life, right? Take the risk, make the leap. Uh, that was awesome. It was uh, actually one of those cloud brokers that's out there, like Masuni, a company called Certus. Uh, had a little bit of trouble about eight months in, so it kind of fell apart. Yeah, the, the, the company did, not you. The company did. <laughs> I was fine, you know, but the, yeah, the, the, the company had some problems, but. Um, you know, ended up leaving there, going to Symantec of all places. So it worked on the Veritas side, or kind of the enterprise side, which just recently got bought out by Avago. Evidently, this yeah, I think yes. hit the new Broadcom. Broadcom. Yes. Broadcom. <laughs> uh, part of the yeah. grand Dave, hold Dave, of Avago. Dave, Dave, you know we're getting up there in years in our tech when we keep talking about <laughs> something. Because I was just reading about right Broadcom, which of course. Avago brought Broadcom in the second largest tech acquisition yep. uh, in history, but when they acquired Broadcom, they took on the name because most people know Broadcom, not as exactly. many people know Avago, even those of us with backgrounds in <laughs> exactly. you know, the chip semiconductor and all those pieces. I mean, you've got Brocade in there, you've got uh, you know, uh, some of the software companies yeah. that they've uh, bought over the time, so some of those go together. But yeah, Veritas and uh, <laughs> Symantec, those of us especially with some storage and networking background know those brands well. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. PLX as being the, the PCI switch as well. It's actually Broadcom, yeah, and <laughs> those things. So yeah, um, went from Symantec after a short period of time there, went uh, to Juniper Networks, ran um, part of their center of excellence, kind of a data center overlay team. Um, the only non-networking guy in a networking company, it felt like. I um, <laughs> can't say that I learned a ton about the networking side, but definitely saw a huge expansion in the data center space with Juniper, which was, which was awesome to see. Um, and then the opportunity came to come back to uh, to Dell Technologies, you know, kind of a, everything old becoming new again, right? And going and revisiting a whole bunch of folks that I had worked with 13, well, you know, 10 and, years and, ago. And, so. and Dave, it's interesting. You know, I th think about, talk about somebody like Broadcom and Avago and things like that. I rem remember reading blog posts of yours that, you know, you'd get down to some of that nitty level. Uh, you and I would be ones that it would be, they talk about a product, all right, now pull the board out, let me look at all the components, <laughs> let me understand, the, you know, the spacing and the cooling and, exactly. you know, all the things there. But, uh, you know, here, it's 2019, Dave. Don't you know software? is eating the world. Uh, uh, so uh, t tell us a little bit about you know, what, what, what you're working on these days because some of the high level things uh, definitely don't bring to mind uh, you know, the, the low level you know, board pieces that uh, we used to talk about uh, many years ago. Exactly, yeah, it's no longer you know, thermals and processing power as much, right? It's still, it's still aspects of that, but a lot of what we're focused on now or what I'm focused on now is it within what we call the emerging technology space, you know? or Horizon 2, Horizon 3, I guess, or... So it sounds like something some analyst firm came up with. <laughs> yeah, like Industry 4.0, 5.0 type stuff. Uh, it's all exciting stuff, but you know, when you look at, stuff, when you look at technologies like 5, 5G, fifth generation wireless, um, you know, both millimeter wave, so sub six gigahertz, um, 
AI, you know, everything old becoming new again, right? Stuff from the 50s and 60s is now starting to permeate everything that we do. Uh, you're not opening your mouth and breathing unless you're talking about AI at some point. Yeah, you know. uh, and you, you bring up a great point. So, you know, we've spent some time with the Dell team understanding AI, but Help Connect uh, for, for our audience that, that, you know, when you talk high, AI, we're talking about, you know, we're talking about data at the center of everything, and it's those applications. Are, are you working on some of those solutions or is it the infrastructure that's going to enable that and you know what needs to be done at, at that level for, for things to work right? I think it's all of the above. You know, the, the, the beauty of kind of Dell technology is that you sit across both infrastructure and software, right? You look at the efforts and energies, you know, stuff like VMware, VMware buying Bitfusion, right? As an, as an, as a mechanism of trying to assuage some of that low-level hardware stuff. You know, let's start to tap into what the infrastructure guys have always been doing. You know, when you bring that kind of capability up the stack, you know, now you can start to develop within the software mindset how we're, you know, how you're going to access this. Infrastructure still plays a huge part of it. You got to run it on something, right? You can't really do serverless AI at this point. Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> um, well, you, you can say that. I might disagree with you yeah, because absolutely fun. there's AI that's running on it. Uh, don't you know, Dave, I actually did a, my, my serverless 101 <sighs> uh, article that I had. I actually had Ashley Guaparala, who's the general manager of Dell servers, holding the T-shirt that there is no serverless. It's just you know a function that you only pay the piece that you need when you need it and everything. Left. But the point of the the, the huge humor that I was having there is even the largest server manufacturer in the world knows that underneath that serverless discussion, absolutely, there is still infrastructure that plays there. Yeah. Just today, it tends to primarily be in AWS with all of their services, uh, but that proliferation. Um, serverless, we're just letting the developers be developers and not have to think about that stuff. Uh, and I mean, Dave, that's stuff we, we've had background. You yeah. know, we want to get rid of silos and make things simpler. I mean, it's the things we've been talking about uh, for decades. Yeah. It's just, you know, for me, it was interesting to look at. It is very much a you know developer application driven piece, yep. top down, as opposed to so many of the you know virtualization and infrastructure as a service is more of a bottom up. Let me try to change this construct um, so that we can then provide what you need above it. Uh, it's it's just a slightly different way of looking at things. Yeah, and I think we're really trying to push for that stuff. So you know you can bundle together hardware that makes it you know, makes a development platform easy to do, right? But the efforts and energy of our partnerships, you know, Dell has engaged in a lot of partnerships within industry, NVIDIA, Intel, AMD, uh, Graphcore, you name it, right? We're out in that space working along with those folks. But a lot of that is driven by software. You know, it's you, you write to a library like CUDA or, you know, Py, you know PyTorch or using these type of, of elements and you're moving towards that. But then it has to run on something, right? And so we want to be in that both end space, right? We want to enable that kind of flexibility and capability, you know, and obviously not prevent it, but we want to also expose that platform to as many people within the industry as possible so they can kind of start to develop on it. You're again becoming a platform company, really, when it comes down to it. Yeah, um, yeah. To, you know, I don't want to get down the semantical arguments of AI, uh, if you will. But you know, what, what are you hearing from customers, and you know, what, what's kind of, some kind of driving some of the discussions lately? That's kind of the reality of AI, as opposed to kind of you know some of just the buzzy hype that everybody talks about. Well, I still think there's some some ambiguity in market around AI versus automation, even. Yeah. You know, so what you know, people that come and ask us, or, well, you know, I, I, I believe in this thing called artificial intelligence and I want to do X, Y, and Z. And these particular workloads could be better handled by simple, you know, not, not to distill it down to the barest minimum, but like cron jobs, right? Like something that's, you know, like go back into history, look at the things that, that matter that you could do very, very simply that don't require, you know, a large amount of libraries or an understanding of, you know, more advanced type algorithms or developments that way. In the, in the reverse, you still have that, that capability now where you know, everything that we're doing within industry use you know, chatbots. You know, some of the intelligence that goes into those, people are starting to recognize, this is a better way that I can serve my customers. And really it's that business out kind of viewpoint. How do I access these customers where they may not have the knowledge set here, but they're coming to us and saying, it's more than just you know, a, a, a call, an IVR system, or, you know, like an electronical IVR system where I got to come in and it's just quick response stuff. I need right. some context. I need to be able to do this yeah. and transform my data into something that's useful for my customers. Yeah, no, it's such a great point, Dave. The, the thing I've, I've asked many times is, you know, my entire career, we've talked about intelligence and we've talked about automation. You know, what's different about it today? And the reality is, is it used to be, all right, I was scripting things or I would have some batch processes or I would put these things together. 
the order of magnitude and scale of what we're talking about today is I couldn't do it manually if I nope. wanted to. Um, and that automation is really, can be really cool these days and it's, it's not as, you know, to set all of those up, uh, there is more intelligence built into it. So, right, whether it's AI or just machine learning uh, kind of underneath them, that spectrum uh, that we talk about it, uh, there's some real use cases, a real lot of things that are happening there and it definitely is, you know, order of magnitudes more improved than uh, what we were talking about, say, back when we were both at EMC <laughs> exactly. and, you know, the latest generation of symmetrics was much more more intelligent than the last generation, but if you look at that right. 10 years later, right. uh, boy, it's, uh, you know, it, 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 is, it is night and day, and how could we ever have used those terms before compared to where we are today? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's ex you know, I, somebody probably at some point, I think, coined the term, you know, exponential. Like, things become exponential as you start to look at it. Yeah, the development in the last 10 years, both in computing horsepower and GPU, GP, GPU horsepower, the, you know, the innovation around, you know, FPGAs are back in a big way now, right? Like, all that, all that brain power that used to be in, the, in these systems now, you, you now can benefit even more from the flexibility of those systems in order to get specific workloads done. It's not for everybody, we yeah. all know that, but all right. it's there. I'm glad you brought up FPGAs oh. because those of us that you know are hardware geeks, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, some reason I studied mechanical engineering not realizing that software would be, you know, a software world that we live in. I did a video with Amy Lewis and she's yeah. like, what was your software defined <laughs> moments? I'm like, you know, gosh, I, I'm, I'm the, you know, the, the, the frog sitting in the pot and, you know, would love to, you know, if I can't Turn network <laughs> diagram it or, you know, put these things together, it's, you know, yeah. uh, networking guys, my background. So, yeah. you know, this software world, but uh, it is a real renaissance in hardware these days. Everything uh, from the FPGAs you mentioned, you know, you look at, you know, I NVIDIA and so all of their partners and the competitors there. Uh, anything you geeking out on the hardware side? I, I, yeah, a lot of this stuff. I mean, you know, what, you know the era of GPU showed up in a big way, all right? We have NVIDIA to thank for that whole, I mean, the, 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 the Kudos to them for developing a software ecosystem alongside hardware. I think that's really what sold that and made that work. Well, you know, you have to be able to solve that Bitcoin uh, mining challenge. So, uh, <laughs> well, uh, you know, so depending on which cryptocurrency you did, you know, AMD kind of snuck in there with, you know, with their stuff, and they did some of that stuff better. But you have that kind of competing architecture stuff, which is always good competition you want. I think now that what we're seeing is that specific workloads now benefit from different styles of compute, and so you have the companies like GraphCore or you know the chip that was just launched out of China this past week that's configurable to any type of network, neural network underneath the covers. You see that kind of evolution in capability now where general purpose is good, but now you start to go into reconfigurable elements, so you know, a la FPGAs or some of these more advanced chips. Uh, the neuromorphic hardware, which is always, you know, given my background in psychology, is always interesting to me, so anything that you know, bi is biomorphic or neuromorphic to me is, you know, pinging around up here like, oh, you're gonna, you're gonna emulate the brain. And Intel's done stuff, brain chips done stuff in that space. It's amazing. I just, yeah, you know, it, the workloads that are coming along the way, you know, I think are starting to demand different types of more effectiveness within the, that hardware now. So you're starting to see a lot of interesting developments, IPUs, TPUs. Uh, I mean, Tesla's getting into the, the inferencing bit now, you know, with their own hardware. So you see a lot of effort and energy being poured in there. Again, there's not going to be one ring to rule them all, to, you know, to cop Tolkien there for a moment, but there's going to be, I think you're going to start to see the disparation of workloads into those specific hardware platforms. Again, software. It's going to start to drive the applications for how you see these things going, and it's going to be the people that can service the most amount of platforms or the, the most amount of capability from a single platform even, I think are the people that are going to come out ahead. And whether that be us or you know, any of our us, august uh, you know, competitors, it remains to be seen. But we want to be in that space. We want to be playing hard in that space as well. All right. Uh, Dave, last thing I want to ask you about is just careers. So uh, it's interesting. At VMworld, uh, I kind of look at it and like, wow, I'm actually, I'm sitting at a panel for opening acts, which is done by the VM Underground people this Sunday, you know, day before VMworld really starts, mm -hmm. uh, talking about jobs. And there's actually three panels, you know, yep. careers and financial and some of those Sunday things. Join <laughs> uh, so, so come on by starting yep. uh, at, at one o'clock. Sure. Um, Monday evening, uh, I'm actually participating in a career cafe, talking about people awesome. uh, and everything like that. Um, so uh, you know, all that stuff's online if if you want to check it out. But uh, you know, right? You said you know, psychology, you know, is what you studied. But you know, you, you worked in engineering. You were a systems engineer. Now you do messaging. You know, the hardcore techies. You know, there, there's always that. 
<laughs> that boundary between yeah. uh, you know kind of the the, the, the techies and the marketings. Yeah. But uh, I think it's obvious to our audience, and they hear you geeking out on the TPUs and all the things yeah. there, um, that you are not uh, you know just uh, you, you're quite knowledgeable when it comes about the technology. And the good technical marketers, I find, tend to come from that kind of background. But give us a little bit, you know, looking back at you know where you where you've been and where you're going and some of those dynamics. Yeah, I mean, I was blessed from a really young age to, with, a, with a father who really loved technology. I and mean, we were building PCs like when, in, back in the 80s, right, when that was a thing. You know, like I built my AMD 386DX box. Yeah, have yeah. you watched the AMC show Halt and Catch Fire when that was on? Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there was that kind of, you know, always interesting to me. And I, you know, with the way my mind works, I can't code to save my life, right? That's, that's my brother's gift, not mine. But being able to kind of assemble things in my head was, you know, kind of, Always something that's stuck in the back. So going through college, I, you know, worked as a as a lab resident as well. You know, working with computer labs and doing that stuff. It's just been it's it's been a passion, right? I had the education was very you know it was my family it was very hard on the education stuff. You're going to do this, but being able to follow that passion, you know, a lot of things kind of fell into place with that, and it's it's been a huge blessing. But even in grad school, when I was getting my master's in clinical counseling, I ran my own consulting business as well, just buying and selling hardware. And a lot of what I've done is just I read and ask a ton of questions. You know, I'm out on Twitter. I'm not the brightest bulb in the you know like in the, of the bunch, but I, I I've learned to ask a lot of questions. And the amount of community support in that I think has gotten me a lot to where where I am as well. Um, but yeah, being kind of able to come out on this side, you know, marketing is like you're saying it's it's kind of anathema to the technical guys. Oh, those are the guys that kind of shine the uh, you know <laughs> shine the turd so to speak, right? But being able to come in and being able to kind of influence the way and make sure that we're technically sound in what we're saying, but you have to translate some of the, the harder stuff, the more in, you know, hardcore engineering terms into, into layman's terms because not everybody's going to approach that. A CIO with the, you know, with the double E or you know, an MS in electrical engineering or going on that, down that road is very few and far between. A lot of these folks have grown up or, or developed their careers in understanding things. But, being able to kind of be uh, go in and translate through that, it's been it's been a huge blessing and it's, it's nice. But always following the areas where, you know, networking for me was never a strong point. But jumping in, going, hey, I'm gonna I'm here to learn, and being willing to learn has been one of the biggest biggest things I think that's kind of reinforced that that career process. Yeah, so. de definitely, uh, Dave. That intellectual curiosity is something that uh, serves anyone in the tech industry quite well because. Uh, you know, nobody's going to be an expert on everything, oh, and God, no. uh, I've spoken to some of the brightest people in our industry, and even they realize, you know, nobody can keep up with all of it. So no. that being able to ask questions, participate, and Dave, thank you so much for helping me, uh, you know, come have this conversation. Uh, great as always to have a chat. Yeah, great to be here, Stu. Thanks. All right, uh, so be sure to check out thecube.net, which is where all of our content always is, what shows we will be at, all the history of where we've been. Uh, this studio is actually in Marlboro, Massachusetts, so uh, not too far uh, outside of Boston, right on the 495 loop. Uh, we're going to be doing lots more videos here. Uh, myself and Dave Vellante are located here. We have a, a good team here, so look for more content out of here. And of course, uh, our big studio out of Palo Alto, California. So if we could be of help, uh, please feel free to reach out. I'm Stu Miniman, and as always, thanks for watching theCUBE.